No, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Trenton Williams has a technique on the backside of blocks that nobody else in the league does as well. Like his ability to cut off on the backside, just slap a guy down to the ground. And here, when he does it, look what he does. He takes down Harrison Smith as well. I mean, this is nothing more than a, a Black Friday Macy's two-for-one sale. He takes both down. <laughs> Brian Baldinger Ball doesn't day. just like football. He loves football. Football! Football, yeah! yeah. yeah. Football! Yeah. Football! Yeah. 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 Football! Yeah. 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 It's like, that guy is so great. I, I could just sit there and watch Baldy salivate over... <laughs> Football play in the trenches for hours on end. Oh, it's so fun because he loves the right plays. Like, he always loves the right plays. Does anyone love anything as much as Brian Baldinger loves to break down film in the trenches? No. No, because I think, like, Dilford doing um, Spy 2, y- YK, blah, blah, Banana. blah. Uh, uh, Banana. Uh, put some respect on. Okay. Name. This is Spider 2 Snap. Not wide, be the, not wide banana, the one he likes, but that's spider two snag, and he knows what I'm talking about by using Antoine Bolton as the fullback. Like, I feel like that's the, that's like the, the Murray stake of uh, football talk, right? But Baldy, Baldy's in the just going into the restaurant and mashing all the buffet. Hopefully, Baldy is breaking this film down on a TCL TV, one of the world's best-selling consumer electronics brands. New lineup of award-winning TVs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution, all at an affordable cost. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL. When are you guys going to admit that you were wrong? Right now and every Wednesday. Let's go. Most make predictions and then never admit they're wrong. Yeah. That's not Mackie and Judd. This is the place where we just totally own our horrible predictions. Write this down. And eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Write that down. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. All right. Yep. This is the most transparent, innovative segment in sports talk. We are the only show in America and on our other show, Mackie and Judd, that's brave and bold enough to put our predictions out there every single week. For you to critique and judge, sometimes for us to celebrate, here's how it works. Three Vikings or football-related predictions or predictions about the show every single week. They must be quantifiable. We keep track of completion percentage and touchdowns for predictions that go above and beyond. And if you guys want to be part of the action and participate as a guest listener predictor like Samson is about to via satellite, you can send us a message through the Score North app. There's a feedback tab at the bottom. And that's how you can also send us comments, questions, critiques, complaints, whatever. And we'll answer them every Friday on Mackie and Judd Feedback Friday. So, all right, Judd has held the completion percentage lead here for a bit. Declan nipping at his heels. The touchdown race is up for grabs. So a lot to play out here in the final month of the Write That Down down. season. Are you guys ready to be held accountable? Mm Mm-hmm. Gotta be. Got no Are choice. You ready? Judd had a nice oh, week. Yeah, a oh. really nice week. Oh. You said the Gophers would beat the Badgers on Saturday? <laughs> Take that axe. You said the Gophers would have exactly an <laughs> eight and four record in 2021. That's a touchdown. That's a tud. It's a touchdown. My prediction capabilities for this football season when it comes to the Gophers and Vikings have been good. Pretty darn gone good. You said Justin well, Fields would start eight or more games for the Bears in 2021. He has. Ugh. You did say Tanner Morgan Ugh. would be top a, three a in pick six. passing oh, I yards. So, I don't feel so good. <laughs> he was There's not. a pick six. Oh, my God. That got tipped at the line of scrimmage in return for a touchdown, didn't it? He was like eighth or something. Yuck. So it was bad. All right. I said the Bears would lose to the Lions by at least 10 points and fire Matt Nagy before their next game. Excuse me. You know, choked up thinking about my guy, Matt Nagy, and his family. Uh, I said Kirk Cousins. He's Mike. That's my coach, my quarterback. <laughs> I said Kirk Cousins would have multiple interceptions against the 49ers. Mm. No faith in Kirk. No faith. Mm-mm. Came close. Played amazing in that second half. Um, and then I said when the match, like the golf, the golf event, 
when it comes back around again, and it did with Bryson DeChambeau and Brooks Kepka last weekend, Larry Fitzgerald, who basically contributed nothing as a broadcaster the last time, would not be involved. Uh, I don't think he was. I admit that I didn't really watch much, but it was Barkley, <laughs> Brian Anderson, and a couple others, so I don't think. I think it was a dud, too, right? Yeah, I mean those guys. Didn't aren't... Kepka win by? Didn't it just got done pretty quick? And yeah, and Kepka Kepka's not like a fun guy. DeShambo is kind of weird, so just keep putting Phil Mickelson. Out I was there. gonna say, I think the celebrity thing too, the Brady or the Peyton or something yeah. like that. I think you're right about that. Yeah, like put Tony. Romo it shouldn't be there. real. No, I don't. Yeah, we don't care about golfers. I don't want to see golfers. Yeah. against golfers. I want to see some. Put an actor out there or something. Um, all right, listeners, Robert said the Vikings defense will allow at least 100 rushing yards in four of their next six games, starting with Carolina. Well, they've actually allowed under 100 three times already in those hmm. games. Now, they allowed over 200 to the Niners, so maybe spread that out. And uh, Ash said by the end of the season, Judd will have three or fewer touchdowns on Purple Daily. Write that down. Well, Judd already has like four, so take that, Ash. Incorrect. Take that to the bank. The blood bank. All right, Declan, you said the Vikings would beat the Niners and the Rams would beat the Packers. Oh, man, did I get added? Actually, not not me, the Score North account. Well, it was me who did it, so I put it out there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but we got quite the ads on that one. That was, uh, get... that was that was my fault. Okay, that's okay. We put ourselves out there. Hey, we put, yeah, we're transparent. We're the most transparent talk show ever. And a lot of Packer fans, oh, look at these guys after taking their, okay. Yeah. yeah, let's let's yeah, let's, let's yeah. chill okay, out. Calm here. down. Yeah, once you yeah, once you give us thirty years of Hall of Fame quarterback, you won a Super Bowl, yeah, Declan. Yeah. Have you ever seen a Super Bowl title? Yeah, no. You said I Tanner haven't. Morgan will have more fourth quarter comebacks than Kirk Cousins this season. How dare you doubt the fourth quarter <laughs> pharaoh? Funny. I don't remember that one. Like that. How dare we believe in Tanner Morgan? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kirk that. Cousins will have a higher passer rating than Jimmy G on Sunday. It was very Barely. close. They were both in the nineties, but Cousins was like ninety three, and Jimmy G was ninety. Mm-hmm. And you said the Niners would rush for at least a buck thirty against the Vikings. Mm. They easily nice. hit that number. Very nice. So with that, Judd sitting oh. at thirty nine percent completions, five touchdowns. Declan at thirty seven percent completions, six touchdowns. Listeners at thirty one percent, but a league leading wow. eight touchdowns. And uh, I'm at twenty seven percent with seven touchdowns on the season. So there you have it. That's the accountability session. Here's how it's going to work. So Samson via satellite. He was unable to join us here sort of live, so to speak. Uh, Then Judd over to Declan and then back to me. Let's do this. Let's start with Samson. The Vikings will miss the playoffs and two of these four people won't return. Kirk Cousins, Mike Zimmer, Clint Kubiak, and Rick Spielman. Ooh, okay. So he said two of those people? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a hard time believing that they're just going to, like, clean everybody out. I, I know people want Spielman gone and Zimmer gone, and a lot of people want Kirk gone. I can't gone. decide. Yeah. I don't think they're just going to gut the whole thing because they, if they were, like, a four-win team, all right, gut it and start over. But I, I think they are so f- afraid of losing their – what they view as, like, a relevant seat in the division and in the conference by winning seven, eight, nine games every year. So – We'll see. Clint Kubiak, that's probably the easy one, right? Like, keep Rick Spielman, gut the coaching staff, yeah, bring in an offensive-centric staff, and maybe yep. even keep keep Cousins. That might be the odds-on favorite at this point. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure that Mike is gone. And I and on Rick, I can't decide. I would personally move on. I don't think they're going to. That's just my gut, though. Okay. Write this down. All right, speaking of your gut. Okay. <laughs> so my gut is smaller now, which is a good thing. Actually, tell the audience. Yeah. Oh, why thank is you. that? This is, a, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about my friends at Livia <laughs> Weight Control <laughs> Centers. That's right. You know oh. what? In fact, in fact, in the spirit of this very segment, I want you to write this down. I'm down 26 pounds, and now you too can give yourself the gift of good health and save 50% off the Livia program today. And your first visit is free. 855 go L I V E A or Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com, 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Follow in my footsteps, 26 pounds, and the weight continues to come off. You can have the same success, too. Livia.com. 
Shout yeah. out too to uh, Federated, just real quick. Federated oh, yeah, has been right. helping businesses since we're on a roll here. Go right ahead. And we're, we're uh, yes. helping spread the word about some of our favorite partners. Federated is here to help business owners with risk management tools, resources, people. You know, think about how winter weather, for instance, can affect your business or pose various risks to the people that work for you. Federated's here with a guiding hand. They're here with expertise, knowledge, and resources at federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. Write this down. All right, back to Judd. Okay, so the report came out, uh, I believe it was on Monday or Sunday night. Dalvin Cook has a a dislocated shoulder, and I believe the Ian Rapport report was torn labrum, correct? Yes. Mike, Mike Zimmer said nothing's torn and said, Dalvin's day-to-day. I don't know what you guys are talking about. What? Why would re- – Okay. Okay. <laughs> He did say that. So anyway, write this down. Dalvin Cook will miss at least two games. So he's not day-to-day. And he's not going to come back soon. He will miss at least two games. Yeah. So the he, earliest, he's out for a, so if he's out for a week, he'll miss two games. So There's the no ear, way he plays. The earliest he returns is in after, after this game in Pittsburgh on Thursday is the next Monday night against Chicago. I not see David. Judd going into check down mode here to protect that completion yeah. percentage. Mm-hmm. Judd, yeah, very, coach, very, very interested in the completion percentage. The head coach title took here. me down this path. The head coach took me down this path with his day to day comment. You just run the plays that are called. <laughs> yeah. You just work yeah. here. Exactly you just right. Work here. I'm just trying to move guys <laughs> around. I'm trying to move my predictions around, and you know, I might write them down on the wrong notepad. You never know. <laughs> you might line up underneath. I'm, yeah, underneath the wrong copier. I'm, I'm underneath the wrong computer. <laughs> Judd, hey. Judd, you're under the wrong guy. Judd, Judd, you got to move over. Move me, Declan. Move me. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it would be if the backup producer came in and had to yeah. tell oh, Judd. That, oh, yeah. Ross, write it down. Oh, you like Ross, writing things down. Yeah. Like you know, he's pretty good. <laughs> See what you did there. See what you did there. The mm. Mason Cole of of Score North. Uh, all right, no, my no. first prediction with Dalvin Cook out, I will say Kane Nuwangu will register at least 15 snaps, special teams and offensive included. Oh, very special important. teams count, very and important. I don't want to get burned here. Yep, so Kane Nwangu will that register at least 15 snaps against the Lions, special teams and offense included. All okay. Right. All right, I had a similar one. I'm going to – I'll sort of amend it. Write it down. There. You like writing things down. But, boys, I'm going to – actually, uh, I'm just going to put this out into the universe. I know everyone's going to hate me for doing this. Okay. But I have to stay true to my gut and to what I feel like is going to happen on Sunday. And so I'm sorry for putting oh, this out into the universe. Vikings fans, you're going to kill me for this. Write this down. The Vikings will lose to the Lions on Sunday. Love it. Love to hear that. Love to hear had it. I had it written down before you even finished. <laughs> yeah, we knew it was coming. Yeah. But I, I like to hear it. And I – so I think a lot of, a lot of people – just interacting with Vikings fans the last few days, kind of want that to happen. Just to get it, like, just get on with it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna fire people, just get on with it. Yep. Um. You know, I would, I would like to see this team go on a run. I just have a listen. The Lions have fought this season. They've lost on like five game winning field goals. You know, last week they had another sort of clock meltdown at the end, and yeah, they're they're a bumbling idiot team. But they're fighting in these games. They have not quit at all on Dan Campbell. And they almost beat the Vikings. They went for a two-point conversion dagger at U.S. Bank Stadium. And so they also have three extra days of rest. The Vikings are coming off a hard-fought game, sort of an emotionally draining loss. Defense they're banged app. up. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry, but mm. part of this show, we want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. But the other thing that we pride ourselves on is we're going to shoot it straight. We're not just going to give you positivity and sunshine. I think they're going to lose to the Lions on Sunday. Oh, Write it down. God. I'm sorry. Write it down. You like writing If they lose down? to the Lions on Sunday, Dan Campbell will become the first coach in history to cry after a game <laughs> against the same team twice. Dude, did you see <laughs> that poor guy at the end of that Bears game look like he wanted to just – jump in front of a bus like I almost feel I think he legitimately thought they were going to win eight or nine games this year just because I'm Dan Campbell and we're going to run through every wall yeah maybe I don't know man Jared got watching the way that Jared Goff has played this season gives me so much more appreciation for Sean McVay Sean McVay brought Jared Goff to the Super Bowl it's a miracle and they almost won it so all right sorry about that write it down you like writing things down all right back to Samson via satellite my second prediction, Kenny Nuangu will have at least one more 
kick return for a touchdown. Wow. Like this season. I'm assuming he means this season, right? Yeah. That's how I took it. Yeah. Dude, he's ridiculous. Let's get him a let's get him a couple offensive snaps. See what happens. Write this down. Okay, Judd. Uh, because it's the most Vikings thing possible. The Vikings will win four of their final six games to finish nine and eight. The yeah. Vikings will win four of their final six games. I'm not predicting which games. I don't even care. But they will do that, and they will finish nine and eight. Yeah. I, I love the guy that uh, tracked all of our predictions from our last schedule from our last schedule release preseason. Yeah, that was and good. Judd is killing it. I was incorrect on the first four games, but now I've won seven in a row. I've I've now wow. at least predicted ah, seven in a row. Nice. Yeah, but Judd, Judd is, is nine, nine and two. two. Yeah. And what yeah. are we? Seven and we're both seven four? and four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not terrible. Yeah. So well, nine Judd's and two. nine and two. Judd's the Viking schedule whisperer. And we all predict, or uh, yeah, yeah, nine and two, seven and four, seven and four. Okay. Oh boy, we'll see what happens. Write this down. All right, back to Declan. All right, my second prediction. The Vikings will not allow any points in the final two minutes of the first half against the Lions. <laughs> I want to speak this Dude, that's into a, that's existence. A, that's a touchdown if it, it happens. It is a touch. It, I think it is because they've allowed 66. Oh, God, that's good. Is it, okay, a, legitimately, that's is it a touchdown, Judd, if it happens? No, because it's Detroit. It's Detroit, yeah. It's Detroit. Okay. If that's it was a good team, I might be it's a good prediction. to say touchdown. But it's a great prediction. I love the prediction. Yeah, they will not allow any points. I'm not sure you're right, points. but it's a good thought. In the final two minutes of the first half against the Lions, please, for the love of God. <laughs> so it's, they should they should literally just like kneel. If they get the ball, they should just kneel down and just run the clock out. Right, down. Just prevent the other team from getting it. Um, all right, write this down. I'll go with a Nuangu prediction, too. And I hear the broadcasters are pronouncing it Wangwu. Like they're, it's a soft N. I've also heard it Nuangu. From people that cover the yeah. team, so Wong-woo? I guess I'm I'm unclear. But um, mm. Kenny Nwangwu, Kenny Wangwu, I like Nwangwu more. Will catch at least one pass in this game. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to try and get him out on like a screen or something. I like it. Try to get him out in the space so he will catch at least one pass against the Lions. And will he house okay. it? Off the record, no. But it'll be a first down. Well, what what makes this a touchdown prediction? I want it to be a touchdown prediction. If it I say be he'll touchdown. catch a pass and it will be a he'll catch at least a pass. No. For a first down. No, I I do no, would that's just not stick a with for a 20, I would just How about a 20 yard, 20 plus yard gain? That's yeah, that that I want I, I want this decks. prediction to be a tu- to be a touchdown. We'll decks. catch at least one pass against the Lions. How, how about this? He'll have at least one 20 yard gain of some kind on offense, not on special teams. He'll have at least a 20-yard gain of yeah, some kind. Boy, we're on very murky ground here, but I, I, I what do you guess mean? I would say. Oh, I just said it's murky ground. It's murky ground. I think it's – I'm basically saying he's going to have an explosive play You haven't had a touchdown in a long time, Phil. I had three like a week ago. Oh, you I? did? You had like six in the first two months. I had yeah. five, and now five. I have seven. Yeah. yeah. I did, So, yeah. So it, it, okay. I, mean, I have more fine. touchdowns than you guys have. Yeah, that's fine. You guys are complaining <laughs> about. Okay, real that's quick, is, is is Vikings losing to Lions? Is that a touchdown or no? They're seven point favorites. I think I think the Vikings lo- losing to Detroit is a bigger touchdown than in yeah. any pick than in a prediction involving a backup Wong-woo. running back. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think that's more of a touchdown. Okay. Because I firmly <laughs> believe they will not lose this game. Okay. I, how can you firmly, firmly believe, believe that? Um, what what uh, ground are you standing on that feels because it's firm. a Vikings, because they because they just lost a game. This is the type of game where Kirk and Mike come back and traditionally show you you didn't believe. There's a lot of Vikings components here. Oh boy! If they had beat San Francisco, I would say I think there's a better chance that they lose this game. But it's very Vikings like. Like this is all Vikings like. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we but back anyway, to Samson here? I think it's touchdown. I think it touched on Phil. Okay. okay. Yes, we're back to Samson. All right, Samson's third prediction. Write this down. My third prediction, Patrick Jones, this I think it's the second, will have at least one sack in the re- remainder of this season. It's just a bunt. I'm trying to be like Judd. <laughs> uh, he's, I like the listeners are calling you out. They're taking a shot at me via satellite. So, so he takes a shot at you. In yeah. this third prediction, then he has a bonus one, which is a Minnesota sports one that he also sent me, but it also involves you a little bit. 
Okay. Does Judd, okay. Can Judd stick around for this? Yeah, yeah, he can hear it. Yeah, he can hear it. He okay. wants you to hear it. Here's his bonus prediction. Nice. Bonus prediction. Anthony Edwards will lead the Timberwolves to more playoff wins this season than Jimmy Butler ever did. Judd, I'm going to need you to wave the damn flag. Wave the oh. damn flag. There it is, Purple Daily getting out. Go what needs to Daly okay? Daly. What what needs to happen? Well, two things real quick. What's the bar there? But they won one game against the Rockets yeah, with Jimmy Butler. Win. Yeah, they just got to win two games. Game okay. three, right? And then so we've Four. on Mackie and Joe, we've introduced the wild flag for their success this year, the Wolves flag for them being an up and coming team. Yep. What needs to happen for us to introduce a Vikings flag on Purple Daily? It's got to go above and beyond, like the, the usual gr- grinding. To, yeah, they if they want a playoff game, we'll bring the. Yeah, we'll Ooh, bring I like the, a towel. Uh, the, a the towel would be good, the, Dex. Yeah, the the Red McCombs towel. Yeah, I have the Minneapolis Miracle one. I uh, I, I use that towel. That's a good towel. Okay, I use that. it's hanging up. I don't use it. It's hanging on the wall. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why I, I said it. I use it. That sounds. Oh man, that was really a good shower. Bad. Where's my Where's no, my Minneapolis Miracle towel? hold it. Hold it. Don't go there. Okay. No, I think I'm going to kill go. me. Back to Judd here for oh, your third. God, oh, okay. Back to me. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to transition to a Gopher football prediction here. Matt Simon will be named the Gophers' new play caller. Okay. I don't think they're going to go outside because of Tanner coming back, so they're not going to change the offense. So there's a few guys that they could possibly go outside and get, but I think that they are just going to go to the guy who. Let me remind you, called plays very well in the bowl win against Auburn, Matt Simon. He will be named the Gophers' new play caller. Okay. I could see that. Write this down. I could definitely see that. Declan, your final prediction? All right. I don't like old negative Macadac there. I actually have a uh, bullish Vikings prediction here. Boy. The Vikings will win by 10 points or more against the Lions. They're going to kick the crap out of the Lions. They'll win by 10 points or more. You guys being I fall between this confident you guys. is weird. I fall I I don't I fall between both of you guys. I think they're going to win. I am not guaranteeing a double digit win. I'm not doing that. Here are the I, Lions games so far this year. All right. Yeah. Well, week one, it was a, a shootout, 41 33 against San Francisco. Yep. Goff threw for 338. They were probably feeling pretty good after that game. Then they got they got smoked by the Packers. Week three. They lost on a 66-yard field goal, a, an NFL record field goal, Justin yep. Tucker. And they played at Chicago. They lost 24-14, so it wasn't a total blowout. Then against Minnesota, they take a lead with 35 seconds to go. Mm-hmm. Kirky McClutcherton drives the Vikings back mm-hmm. down the field, and the Vikings bang, bang, two throws, and the Vikings kick a game-winning field goal. Again, a 19-17 win. Um, then they went through a stretch where they weren't playing very competitive. They, they did against the – actually, I take that back. They got smoked by the Bengals, and then they were up on the Rams like 10 to nothing in Los Angeles in Week 7. And they wind up giving that game away in the fourth quarter. They got smoked by Philadelphia off a of bye. Then they tie – so the last three weeks, they tie Pittsburgh on the road. They lose 13 to 10 at Cleveland – and then they lose 16 to 14 against Chicago. So their last three games, they are 0 2 and 1, but the total differential is five points across those three games. Yeah. So, like, like, like six I or be- seven of their games are coming down to the wire. Yeah. It might be or, close. like, miracle field goals. Yeah. And you guys are like, oh, the Vikings are going to do that. Wait, don't, don't, don't lump me in. I just said I think it, no, I, me. It, it, it could be close. I just yeah, think they're going to win. Because yeah, they're usually, because they're going to. They're, 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 they're coming back from a loss. They're they're gonna be they're gonna want to show us we we can go beat the Lions. Bravo. Declan yeah, it, saying it should ten be a get points right or game. more. It should be a get right game. Okay. Right this Declan down. saying ten points or more, not me. And uh, the Vikings uh, are uh. seven point favorites, so it's I don't think I don't think it's a touchdown if it's ten points or more, but um we'll see. I think an uh, upset. By is. the way you're talking about these Lions, I feel like it is a touchdown. Well, no, no that's, that, how, that, that's how that's how I touchdown. think. That's not a touchdown. Oh, got it. Phil's is a touchdown. If okay. Phil's right and they upset and Detroit upsets the Vikings, I think that's a touchdown. Yeah, Vikings are are touchdown favorites on the road. And I didn't mean to mock him before for his long cold <laughs> streak after I on on traditional write that down have had a very very poor stretch. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'll give you I gave you a sort of an advanced version of this on Mackie and Joe, but I'll scale it back a little for Purple Day. The, the Patriots will represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. 
write this down. I, I love what they're doing right now with Tom Brady 2.0. Belichick just been stewing for two years. So uh, Patriots will represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. Maybe the Vikings can join them if they get hot here. We'll see. Mac After Jones. lose to the Lions. <laughs> Mac Jones. So there you have it. Those are your write, this write down. that down predictions here on uh, this Wednesday. Every single week, we hold each other accountable. Um, real quick, before we get into purple positivity, which we also do on Wednesdays, what helps you cope after a devastating Vikings loss, Judd? Could it be Surly? Could it be? It is, most definitely. Surly Brewing helps me cope. You know what? The best part is actually win or lose. Win or lose, it's always time for my first round draft pick. Surly, and in my case, the IPA, Surly Furious, which is the most delicious IPA that I've ever found. Um, if, if you have found it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, get to your your liquor store and try it out. Surly furious it's the best ipa and as always if you are enjoying the red surly furious can as always you know what i want you to do i want you to go on twitter i want you to go to uh, uh jay zolgad and show, show us, us your, cans. your cans thank you show gentlemen show show me your cans <laughs> possibly with a football game on in the background if you so <laughs> desire Love it. All right, boys. What is the nicest thing that you can say, the most positive thing you can say about the Minnesota Vikings right now? We'll start with Judd. Most positive thing I can say about the Vikings is um, more and more offensively, I really like the components personnel-wise that this team has. I think they're on the right track. Um, Je Jefferson's outstanding. You know what? Conklin has turned out to, to be certainly an improvement on what this team ha had previously with Kyle and Irv Smith Jr. is coming back at some point in time here. Um, Nuwangu or Wangu or however we're going to pronounce it looks to be a, a potentially dynamic player in certain situations. So I like this team. I think if you get the right coach here for 2022, I think there is offensively a lot to work with that could make this fun and successful. And you're not going to be in, in a, oh man, our team's a mess. You're going to be in a very favorable situation with the right coaching. All right. Yeah. I, God, there's so much potential here too. Even for this season, like if they, if they can just find their way aggressively on offense, like they can still get to nine or 10, maybe win a playoff game. We'll see. But Declan, what's the most positive thing you can say about the Vikings? I think, uh, you know, Brian O'Neill's been established here as, as obviously a very solid right tackle. Christian Derrissaw's looked well. But Ezra Cleveland, I think Ezra Cleveland has locked down this guard spot and solidified as he's a very established, solid NFL guard. Last week was the highest graded, not just offensive lineman, not just offensive player, but overall player in the NFL last week. He had the highest PFF grade of any NFL player last really? week. Yes. Oh, that's amazing, uh, dude. That's incredible, so actually. Good I, I, you know, is he going to be the 93 guard every single week? Probably not. But he looks like he's finally made that transition. And as we've talked about, shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic, basically, of moving a tackle to a guard has not always worked well for other players. I think Ezra Cleveland has stepped in and, and has at least established himself as a good guard. So right now, hopefully, knock on wood, the Vikings now have three in O'Neal, Ezra Cleveland, and Christian Derrissaw, established, solid offensive linemen, Probably go out and find a center this year. Maybe that's in free agency. Maybe that's in the draft. You know, Mason Cole's filled in admirably. Garrett Bradbury clearly ain't it. But if you can find at least a another center, I think at least Ezra Cleveland and O'Neal and Darisov have helped solidify this offensive line. So congrats, Ezra Cleveland. Congrats for helping yeah. us solidify the yeah, offensive line. Yeah, I'm trying line. to figure out, like, right now, let's say you had some free agency budget and, and there are some offensive linemen that you could... Let's say there was some... Every, like, center, guard, tackles just available if you wanted to upgrade which positions are you comfortable even with options out there just pushing it forward into 2022 i'm good with darisaw at left tackle i'm good with brian o'neill at right tackle after ezra cleveland's game this last week i'm curious but i'm not locked in on him i want probably a new starting center mm -hmm. mason cole's been good 
but I I'd, I'd still be curious about like an actual franchise center, and I definitely want a new right guard. <laughs> What, like, what are your your confidence rankings across the the offensive line? Um, I think the two tackle spots and left guard, I'm good with. I think they're all solid, two very good. Mm-hmm. Center, yeah, I center's the position where I want to go get a guy, especially if Kirk is going to be back, where where the center can run things because Kirk needs help. Kirk needs mental help as far as what's going on and he doesn't get it right yeah. now and, and boone has shown us a couple examples of they yeah. identified they id'd this and, wrong at the line it's the center's fault the way, or it's kirk's fault like if i know that for a fact i'm going to get him help like i'm not going to say well kirk if you can't we're screwed then no you you can help him out yes right guard um right guard i would like to go get uh i would like to go get help there for sure uh i'm curious with the way that and this is just curious, but with the way that Mason Cole's played at center, he actually during his time with the Cardinals graded out better at guard. I'd be curious if he can play guard as well. Uh, but I, I mm-hmm. really think like the linchpin of what that line needs a center, a mm-hmm. veteran stabilizing, uh, for lack of a better term, kick ass smart center. Because those guys are so ve- valuable to the entire offensive structure and yes. the Vikings. The Vikings in Kirk's time here have lacked that the entire time. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I just kind of feel like, you know, we for basically twenty years, whether it was Jeff Christie in the nineties or Matt Burke, and then John Sullivan was really good. The Vikings had a run of great, reliable centers, time, and yeah. kind of took it for granted. Yeah. And you wonder what you know, why was Tavares Jackson able to get to the playoffs one year? Why was Christian Ponder able to get to the playoffs one year? Well, they had amazing offensive lines, and the defenses were good enough. And so those guys could just sort of sit in the car and not crash it. And now it's like you got a quarterback that can actually kind of drive a car. Like He's not driving it like Pat Mahomes drives a car or like Tom Brady drives a car, but uh, but the structure of the car is – prone to accidents because you got a bad center or you're you're shuffling through centers um my purple positivity is at least they're not the jets at least they're not the lions and you know why i say that so my expectation is not just to avoid being the lions but i sense that a lot of fans want to be told that this week and so i'm going to tell you that the new york jets have exactly one double digit win season in the last 11 years uh, they have seasons with three wins, two wins, four, five and eleven, five and eleven, four and twelve. Like they have more train wreck seasons and last place finishes in the last decade than uh, pretty much any other team next to the Lions in the NFL. And so, if you're in the camp that looks at this season and says, "Yeah, but like they almost beat these three teams, and the Niners are red hot, and that's okay," I'm gonna go along with you and say you're right. I'm probably overreacting with my high lofty expectations of the Vikings winning a Super Bowl at some point. I should just be happy that they aren't the Lions, Jets, or Texans. Jets have a Super Bowl. That's 50 years ago. Jets have a, its greatest upset in Super Bowl history, I, I believe, to this day, right? It is, yes. I mean, the Jets, now the Lions, I'm totally with you on. Oh are people God. still celebrating that? Are people still like going to bed? I'm you're a Jets saying. fan. You're like, God, the Jets suck, but we won that Super Bowl 50 years ago. What's so, the with yeah. with, with uh, <laughs> yeah? I'm just saying, flags fly forever. <laughs> well, they're they're a little bit tattered, I think. Well, yeah, the flag's years, not in great shape, and it, it it was at Shea Stadium for years. But the the Lions, the Lions <laughs> oh my yeah. God, the Lions have only been to the playoffs three times since 1999. They have only won double-digit games in a season twice since 1995 and six times basically ever in their franchise history. I believe, if if I'm not mistaken on this, I believe that the Detroit Lions were in the NFC Championship game against Washington in the Super Bowl that was played here. So I think They they were in 1991. That's the last time they won a playoff game was 1991. They beat Dallas, right? They beat, they beat Dallas and they played Washington. And I think if they had somehow upset what is now the Washington football team, they would have played Buffalo in the Super Bowl at the Metrodome. 
They smoked Dallas, 38 to six. Yeah, that was when Dallas was turning the, the corner but hadn't Silver turned Dome. it yet. Yes. Amazing. How about that, though? Barry Sanders in that game only had 12 rushes for 69 yards. The uh, Really? Yeah, the, the Lions threw the ball all over the Cowboys in that game. Very Who's your quarterback? Eric Kramer. Eric Kramer, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 341 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions against the Dallas secondary there. And I think that was the last time for a long time that at that point the Cowboys were got beat. Yeah, then or, they or went, embarrassed, then, I should then, say. Then, then their dynasty yep, launched. Kid, kid. So, all right, purple. Po- any other positives you guys want to throw out there? Just since we've been hammering this team for like 72 straight hours, six games left. That's As positive. in our misery is done in six games? Yeah, I mean, the up and down. But it's not going to be all misery. They're yeah, not going to go 0-6. Right. No, but I, I think it's worse. I think it's worse win, win. Oh, boy, they might be back. Loss, win. I think that's worse. What's the, what, the other thing that's amazing, too, is like Washington is 5-6, and six, but the vibe there is, or even like De- like Denver is 6-5. and five. But the vibe in those cities is different because they feel like they've got a roster that's building and they might just need a quarterback to be the final piece and they got new well, front office coaches, you know. Yeah. There's a new there's a newness and a sort of a like an uprising feeling. When the Vikings are sitting around the same record in year eight of Zimmer and right. year four of Cousins, it's like Right. Ah, it just it feels more <laughs> stale, I think, than some of these other teams. Absolutely does. And and look, when wh- when Washington won, to your point, Phil, the the Rivera post game stuff was great. Like he's telling them, yeah, this is what I mean. Everything Mike, we need is in Mike, this room right now. Mike yeah. gives Mike gives speeches, but it always feels I don't know. It doesn't feel the same. Like R- Rivera, his whole mantra is people don't believe, but he spins it to a a real positive. I can't describe it, but there's just a clear difference in the enthusiasm there compared to, to yes, it feels here. It feels stale. And I just think we're also to a point with Zim and Kirk where the fan base sees through them. Like, we're just like, you don't really know. I don't know that everyone's there. I think a lot of the people that that listen to and watch our show are are kind of there. Like, yeah, I think a lot of people consume us are. Yeah. Like, I mean, Again, it's it's so easy to get tricked here because Zimmer and Cousins are both good enough to always get you to like respectability, sure. seven, eight, nine, ten wins, and they're even good enough to win a playoff game every once in a while. But I just don't think there's any evidence that shows you those guys are good enough to roll through like three straight playoff wins or four straight playoff wins against the best teams in the NFL. When you have to you have to go through Rodgers and then Brady, you know, previously Breeze, who they beat a couple times, but. You don't hang banners because you won a playoff game or because you beat the Packers in week 11, right? Like that Aaron Nagler from Cheesehead TV was chiding the Vikings and Vikings fans because congratulations on your midseason Super Bowl. You know, I know that you guys live for this. And like we mocked it and stuff, but that's – it's it's a fair well, some, shot. Like the Packers are do. playing for act- – the like Packers are yeah. playing to get to the Super Bowl every single year. The Vikings some are playing do. to get to the playoffs, and that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. I just – I think it's just about done. Well, we'll see. Vikings vent line, whatever happens on Sunday, whether it's Declan's prediction, a blowout win, or whatever whether it's happens, my prediction, <laughs> and it's anarchy. Have your surly furious nearby. You'll feel better. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, Vikings vent line after every Vikings game. This is Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. See you guys tomorrow.